but please turn your cameras off for the time being and we will let our commissioners begin the news conference. Great. Well, hello everyone and good afternoon. I'm happy to be joined uh, by my colleagues, uh, uh, one of our uh, private partners who you'll get to hear from soon and our mayor, Wade Kapsikevich. Uh, as you all remember, just last week, we started uh, the public-private partnership on widespread testing um, in our area and um, the Neighborhood Health Association will be able to uh, move forward on its public testing starting uh, this afternoon. Uh, and as you know, um, this testing is our gateway to uh, helping our community be safe and to help our community get the economy going again and really to help everyone um, safely prepare to go back to work when, uh, when it's their time. Um, so fortunately, um, the testing has been going very, very well uh, and it's been going smoothly. Um, and in this last short period of time, more than 1,300 people have been tested and um, some of the results are starting to come in. Uh, so the, you know, the, the testing is so critical um, and the results will help us get a clear uh, picture of how uh, we're doing with coronavirus and where the coronavirus might be more predominant and where it might be spreading. Uh, so we need to do more uh, with our opportunities in this area um, and find out and, and try to help people that are um, extremely vulnerable. Uh, bottom line is Lucas County wants to move forward fast and nimble and get um, more information as quickly as we can. So I'll turn it over to my colleagues now. Hi, let me start over. Hi, Pete Durkin, <laughs> County Commissioner. Uh, we're pleased today uh, to announce another testing partnership that will help us protect one of the most vulnerable populations, people in long-term care facilities. Now, we know that many of you have been concerned about this, and, and Gary and Tina and I share that concern. So we're really very optimistic that this announcement today will help us take care of those patients and, and the care workers that provide peace of mind for their loved ones. Especially want to take a minute to talk about the, the healthcare workers as well as the patients in there. These are our frontline warriors uh, in, in these places that we depend on. Many of them uh, are juggling two jobs. Some, some of them make very minimum wage, but they're risking their lives for our community. So to take them, to get them tested also, along with the patients we think is, is a major step forward. And I wanna thank uh, Matt Hamlin and, and Quest because people that are sheltered like this uh, voices often don't get heard. And, and Matt, I'd also want to take this minute uh, not only to thank you, but to ask you if uh, the next people we talk about are the people in the homeless shelters. As much as the long-term care facilities, we have people that are in vulnerable conditions. Thank you for all your help with this. But we'd like to see some of this expanded as soon as we can to the, uh, the uh, heroic work done in our shelters, as long as our health long care facilities. And thank you for the workers that are risking their lives in there. Absolutely, thank you, Pete. Also, we all realize that this is a particularly difficult issue for families that have loved ones that are in term care facilities. We know that even <laughs> with precautions in place, that it is difficult to protect these people because they're in such susceptible situations, <laughs> by, not only by the nature of their age, uh, but also uh, by the, uh, the fact that uh, they are many times uh, very vulnerable based on their physical conditions. Uh, we also know that one of the best ways to protect people is through testing. This announcement is a huge step in making sure that we know who is at risk and providing the proper care and the protection for all of them to make sure that they can get the protection that they need. I want to particularly thank uh, Commissioner Guzinski. Uh, Eric, thank you very much uh, for the job that you've been doing and our testing partner, Quest, uh, as uh, Pete and Tina also indicated that this is something that is 
going to take a major step forward in protecting this vulnerable population. And as Pete has indicated, we want to extend this, but this is a great first step. We are very, very appreciative. Chris. Thank you, commissioners. And we will ask that you turn off your cameras now and we wanna bring our health commissioner Dr. Eric Jasinski into the picture now to talk more about uh, not only the new testing program that we just mentioned, um, but also if you could just touch on what has been done and what the health department and other areas are doing to help uh, the folks in these long-term care facilities, Eric. And we need you to turn on your microphone. <laughs> Wow, you think this will be my first time? I, I do this apologize. Is the hazard, yeah, of people coming on and off. Thank you. Yes, yes. Um, uh, I, I, I want to save the testing for the second part. I do want to talk about where we've been with nursing homes. Uh, as you've heard from the, the commissioners, and you'll, you'll hear from the mayor here in a bit, uh, this has been a true concern of all of them, as well as many other elected officials and entities. Uh, but relative to the four that are on the, uh, on the screen today, uh, we've had daily conversations um, about nursing homes, about congregate care, uh, about these these very issues. And, and each day, uh, especially over the last two weeks, we've really tried to figure out how to each day make it better for for, our, for the residents and the staff in these nursing homes. And we've done that by a, a number of different ways. Uh, er, early on, we knew the issues in Seattle and, and some of the other states with our nursing homes, our long-term care facilities. And so we needed to be able to, to try to ramp up and, and understand how we could help them out as much as possible we could uh, without testing. And again, that is a huge component here of, of where we're at today because that, that testing was not there. But again, working with them, and it's all about relationships, trying to contact them immediately when they start having issues. And, and when I mean issues, I even mean before we actually had cases is what do you need? How can we help you? Uh, again, those conversations turned into something much more critical as we started seeing cases over, over the weeks at these at these nursing homes and long-term care facilities. And it was so important then to figure out how, how can we help them. PPE was in short supply, but working through the uh, EOC here, uh, we try to get them as much PPE as possible at that point in time. But really, you know, we needed to take another step further. And, and so helping them um, understand the, the, uh, the issues inside their community uh, relative to infectious disease protocols and procedures, uh, can we have another eyes eyes on on site, if you would, to help them there? And we've attempted to do that too through our office, uh, through the Ohio Department of Health, uh, helping them uh, understand: Can we do it a little bit different, a little bit better with the uh, with the limited amount of resources and testing capabilities? That turned into something a little bit different. Uh, again, this is a great community, and, and our hospital partners jumped right on when we asked them to to come on board and see how could they help. And if you remember, we talked about testing uh, well over a week ago from those hospitals going in and helping test as much as they could. But again, limited amount of testing, but they, they, did, they did a yeoman's job and, and they, were, they were prepared to come, come, in, come in even further and, and test. But more importantly, now we're trying to figure out how can house, hospitals also have eyes on site for those individuals in, the, in those nursing homes, those, those, those staff members that might need uh, maybe uh, an upset eyes to understand what's going on with their pressure control practitioner or practices, excuse me. So again, uh, it, it's been a very concerted effort to try to make sure that we bring as much resource as we possibly could into those, those nursing homes as they need. Uh, again, these are all things that we're saying, we have the, 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 these issues in your, in your nursing homes. We have tools that could help you please you know, allow us to, to come in and help where, where needed. Uh, but again, these individuals, you need to understand they're doing the best they can with the, the position they're in and the amount of resources and testing at that point in time. And, and, and again, they, they are really, really trying. And so I commend them for that. They're putting their lives on the line too, as the commissioner said, uh, every day when they walk into some of those facilities. But I think now it's a time to be excited a, a little bit here in the sense that we've talked about, you know, testing and not having tests, and we've had to do things to counteract not having those tests. But with Quest, and, and thank you, Matt, we, we really appreciate, over the, over the last uh, really 48 hours, if you would, uh, we've, we've been working with Quest to come up with a solution to the limited amount of testing in our community. And we started actually approaching Quest uh, Friday, and, and I gotta tell you, the, the phone calls and the amount of work that they did Friday was, was just phenomenal. 
uh, we came back Saturday and we ironed things out relative to how do we get testing for anybody who wants it in nursing homes relative to the residents or their staff. Doesn't mean that, that they're, they're all going to take it because some of them have already tested or, or maybe they feel that they have, a, they have a handle on what's going on in their communities. But again, this is a resource, another resource that we put together so that those nursing homes have the ability to test anybody they want to. So when we say anybody, uh, we're projecting that you know we might need 6,000 tests if everybody was to be tested in nursing homes. And this is our, this is our best guess relative to the amount of beds and things of that nature, relative to staff as well, relative to that nature of who might be needed to test. And we approached Quest and said, could we do this? And they said, absolutely, let's, let's get a system in place. So uh, Sunday, we sent out, um, uh, su Sunday and today, letters went out, phone calls have been made, uh, how to actually bring in this type of testing uh, to those to those nursing homes. And, and again, this is going to be able to do a couple things. We know that there's asymptomatic cases inside our nursing homes. We know that nursing homes have to make the attempt to put people who are COVID positive in an area, those that are, 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 are negative in another area, to be able to make sure that those, those, two, those two populations don't mix and then infect each other. So that, that is a, a true concern. That's what this testing could, could give us. Uh, it's going to give us an idea with inside of our nursing homes, which are actually occurring as well too, which is really important because then we can make some very logical decisions on um, future, future medical treatments for individuals, uh, the idea that we, we know how many positive or negatives are inside of a facility. So that facility now has a, a, has a very sound tool to be able to do that. Um, again, because testing was so limited and, and not really not really available. We just felt that we needed to do something for our community to be able then to say, here you go, here's the tool, we got this for you. It's up to you now to, to, to use it the right way. Uh, again, every facility has their own medical director who then will go ahead and say, yes, we need to test these individuals. Uh, these are the amount of, uh, of tests we have. So again, it, it's, really, it's really a great day for us in our nursing homes. Uh, but what I really like to do is that I, I want to give Matt and, and Quest Diagnostic a, a chance to actually talk about what they've been able to do in a short amount of time. And again, just a great partnership. So it's my pleasure to introduce Matt Hamlin from Quest Diagnostic. Uh, he's the vice president and general manager of the, uh, the great uh, Midwest region, which covers 19 states, including Ohio. So Matt, please, uh, the, floor, the, the floor is yours. All right, well, good afternoon, uh, commissioners, mayor. Thank you. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to speak to you uh, collectively. Uh, Quest Diagnostics is really delighted to be of service to Toledo, Lucas County. And um, the work we do is really essential to the public health. Uh, we provide data that then uh, creates insights for clinicians. And it's really those insights that dictate action by those clinicians to really affect the care of patients. So we, uh, we play an important role and we're really pleased to be able to respond quickly as we have to the requests that uh, the county commissioners made uh, literally just uh, Friday evening. Um, as, as Eric points out, we worked uh, diligently over the weekend contacting 67 long-term care facilities, set up accounts uh, across the county. Uh, we actually have supplies, collection supplies being delivered today uh, first lot, the 500 kits, and we're expecting then to continue that throughout the week to get to a total of roughly 5,000 kits in the course of roughly the week, the next five to six days. Um, and this will continue. Again, we'll do this until we have 100% coverage uh, based upon what your requests have been. So we're really, really pleased to do it. Um, let, me, let me share just very uh, quickly, uh, just so you can understand the, the scope and scale of what we're doing as an organization. You know, Quest Diagnostics is a very large national laboratory with services all across the United States. Uh, we ramped up uh, when we had the opportunity and were informed about COVID-19 just really middle of, middle of March, just a month ago. Uh, we were able to develop testing capabilities and today we perform up to 55,000 molecular diagnostic tests per day. Uh, in the region, the great Midwest region for which I am responsible and for which the state of Ohio and Lucas County uh, is directly uh, under my responsibility. We do that diagnostic testing in our Wooddale, Chicago, Illinois laboratory. Our logistics network moves specimens to that laboratory in the evening and overnight that testing is performed. So results for high priority patients can be available the next day. Uh, for non-priority patients, typically two to three days maximum based on current capacity and current demand. 
Uh, we are expecting to see that demand take off again, uh, kind of goes in a little bit of uh, some waves, but largely um, the limitations that we had earlier when testing was launched was due to supply chain limitations. Collection kits were just not available. Nobody anywhere in the United States was prepared for what COVID-19 has done in taxing the healthcare industry overall. So it's taken time for the supply chain to ramp up. Quest Diagnostics has also undertaken its own production of collection kits, which just made it, were made available to us last week. And so that's really enabled us to get those out in the community a lot quicker. And hence, that's exactly what Lucas County is enjoying today. So really very proud of what we're doing to help serve the public and clearly recognizing that Toledo Lucas County has become a hotspot, regrettably, for COVID-19. And uh, we wanna be there to serve to the extent, every extent possible. So we're pleased to do this. And I thank you for uh, the commissioners reaching out to us for this service. Thank you so much, Matthew Hamlin from Quest Diagnostics, and Matthew will graciously stick around for any questions that you might have of him. Um, we do want to remind you, uh, and you can turn your camera off for now, um, Matthew, that we do have um, community-wide testing ongoing in our community, and so we want to show you those uh, sites that people are able to access and remind you what those are. And we will also put this graphic into the comments section on our social media pages. Uh, Rite Aid continues testing at the airport highway location in Holland. Um, also uh, beginning today, tests will begin from our neighborhood health association sites. Those are at the Nexus Health Healthcare Center on Jefferson Avenue in downtown and also uh, the Navarre Park Family Care Center on Barland Avenue on the east side. Uh, that is at the East uh, Toledo Family Center location. Those testings begin today. And then on Thursday, I believe, um, Metro Parks Hawkins Farmhouse location site will be taken over by Walmart. And all of these four sites, you have to make appointments ahead of time. There's a screening process that you go through online. But again, if you're interested in that, you do need to be showing symptoms. That information will be in the comments section here. We want to uh, bring our Toledo mayor into the conversation now, uh, who has been working so diligently along with so many um, to make this a true community effort, mayor. Thank you, Chris, and thank you everyone for joining us uh, here this afternoon. Uh, as Chris just uh, mentioned, uh, really I look at today's announcement as another layer in the testing that is ongoing in our community. Even as Kroger's operation sort of wrapped up over the weekend, that's going to be replaced by what uh, Walmart is, uh, Walmart's gonna sort of pick up the slack at the exact same location to begin Thursday. Neighborhood Health Association begins today. Obviously, Rite Aid is ongoing. And now this, uh, this additional piece, albeit targeted for a very specific community, but a community where we are seeing uh, just some heartbreaking uh, numbers. Um, with, you know, when you think about what COVID-19 does and how it spreads, um, it's not a surprise that nationwide, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that uh, two of the areas where we've seen some of the most, uh, uh, again, heartbreaking numbers are, you know, jails and prisons and, uh, you know, nursing care, uh, nursing home assisted living facilities. Now, those two sorts of facilities really typically don't have much in common. Uh, but in this case, they share one similarity and that is people uh, together in a confined space in a way that uh, is uh, uh, very hurtful for what needs to happen to prevent the spread of this virus. So it's not a surprise that we're seeing it, but it, it's, it just indicates the sort of challenge that, uh, that we face. That is why uh, we are so thankful for Matt and Quest Diagnostics and how quickly they answered the call. I think Eric and Matt both indicated uh, that this was a contact that was made Friday and here essentially one business day later, admittedly with a weekend in between, but nonetheless, one business day later, uh, you go from first contact to uh, rolling out uh, you know, a menu of services that we think can be very helpful uh, to one of the most vulnerable communities 
and one of the communities that is disproportionately being affected by what's happening here. I think probably the last thing I will say is a point we made last week, but it's worth reiterating just how important testing is to get out of uh, you know, this confined reality that seems so uncomfortable to many of us. People talk about trying to return to something resembling normal. Um, you know, here in about a half an hour, the governor is going to uh, make his really a, a major announcement about what's going to open when here over the next couple weeks and month. And though I don't, uh, it's not my place to make his announcement for him, I think I will say that I believe most people will be surprised, frankly, by how little is going to be reopened, um, at least initially. And again, I'll let him announce that here in a half an hour, but the reality is the reason that we can't open more quickly and we can't sort of return to normal the way we all want to is because there's not enough testing. And that is what makes uh, this partnership so important. And frankly, uh, that is, uh, it, it is worth noting, like we said last week, that because of our private sector partners, whether it's Quest Diagnostics or Walmart, Rite Aid, Kroger, Neighborhood Health Association, Regardless, because of the partnerships we have developed, because of how quickly and nimbly we've been able to pull these some of these things together, uh, Toledo really is. When you look around and compare our community to elsewhere in the state, certainly elsewhere in the country, we are uh, we're ahead of the game when it comes to testing and uh, providing services to people. Not where we want to be. That it's, we're a small piece in a larger national uh, system, and it's a national system that I might argue isn't working as well as we would expect our national government to perform. But nonetheless, here locally, I think today is another demonstration of the creativity um, of, of finding solutions. And we can't be more thankful to Matt and Quest Diagnostics for their role in that. So thank you and I will turn it back to you, Chris. Thank you very much, Mayor. And now if anybody has any questions, we have our Lucas County Commissioners, we have our Toledo Mayor, our Health Commissioner along with um, Matthew Hamlin from Quest Diagnostics. And we have uh, a few hands going up already. So Sophia Paracone from NBC24, go ahead and ask your question. Can you hear me? We can, thank you. Okay, awesome. So I know um, testing kits are starting to be delivered this week. So when can we expect these testings in these facilities to begin? And hospital workers will be going? going in and performing them. Just want to make sure I'm getting that right. Um, I'll, let me start off and then Matt, you might want to follow up here. As we understand it uh, over the conversation this weekend, uh, that tests would be, re would be uh, being received by these facilities early this week. And I'd, I'd like to see all testing that we would need to do uh, be completed by Friday. But again, it all depends on the amount of personnel that can actually do the testing. And the, that, that concern really cut, falls back onto each one of those facilities, um, they're they're uh, they're going to be able to be able to do those those tests, package those up, and then send that out to Quest. And I want to make sure that again we stress this: this is another tool for our nursing homes to utilize and utilize the right way. Uh, they make they make that decision uh, on how those those tests will be uh, undertaken, uh, um, when they're taken, and then when they're shipped out. So so really. What we've done is given this huge tool to those to those nursing homes, long-term care facilities, to be able to utilize. Matt, anything? Yeah, the only thing I'll add is that uh, you know the health department has been very helpful in identifying the priority locations, and those are the ones that are getting the kits immediately. And uh, we'll turn those around within a day or two, based on how quickly those facilities are able to collect. We'll pick up every day until completed. Actually, Matt, I think you said that you pick up a couple times a day if needed, correct? If need be, if need be. It really will depend on, on the speed with which the facilities can collect. Thank you. Thank you, Sophia. And just as a reminder, we're asking if you're not answering um, the questions to keep your cameras off until someone directs a question to you, or if you have an answer to something that somebody is asking so that we um, can have our sign language interpreters at a nicer size for people to be able to see. Melissa Vach from 13ABC has a question now, Melissa. 
Yes, hi. Um, my question's for Matt and probably Eric follow up, um, but it's, it's along the same lines as we were just talking about, but can you tell me succinctly how you see this week going, Matt? We've dropped off kits to the most urgent, continue to drop off kits to the rest of, how big of a, this is, you've said what, 67 long-term care facilities? Pretty big project here. Well, it, it has been, but we've got a large team of people that we've deployed and everyone has just been terrific. Uh, in cooperation at the county and within our organization. So uh, all those accounts have been set up. Uh, the 67 facilities were notified uh, this weekend uh, by the county. And uh, based on the prioritization of those that the county identified, we are moving specimen, we're moving specimen collection kits directly to those sites. So again, we're, uh, we're, we're moving rapidly, literally this morning, uh, I think the first kits are expected to be delivered uh, early this afternoon and we'll continue hereafter uh, for the next several days. Okay, thank you. Melissa, just to follow up real quick, there, there have been some facilities that actually have done, if you would, mass testing uh, of their facility. So some of them may not need, uh, need to do further testing or, or limited. Uh, there's some facilities out there that probably won't need testing because they feel that they have a handle on it. Uh, but again, uh, it, it, this, is, this, is just, this is just something for this community to be able to utilize if they see fit. Okay, and then by the end of the week, Eric, you're looking to have a pretty solid picture of what we're, what we're dealing with here? Uh, again, understanding uh, these nursing homes and that, that vulnerable po population they have, um, at least from my point of view, I'd like to see it done as quick as can. But really, uh, it, the limiting factor is really those nursing homes getting in there, getting it done, um, and the amount of staff that they might need to actually do it. Uh, again, they're like I said, Melissa, they're they're doing they're doing some great work in there. Um, but we know that that it is a truly an issue with inside those homes. All right, thank you. Next question from Tyler Wiley. Hello? Hmm. Okay, Brian Duggar, you have your hand up from WTOL. Hi, uh, Mayor, you talked about the long, obviously the nursing home, but you also mentioned the jail population. Are there any plans in place for doing mass testing of the jails? Am I, can you still see me or not? Can't see you, but we can hear you, Mayor. Okay. I, I actually, I would defer that question to the health department. They, they've taken the lead on this kind of testing. So uh, I am never bashful uh, to give my thoughts and opinions as members of the media know, but this one, um, I think that's a better question posed to the health department. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, you know, again, we, we've, uh, we've been actually inside the jail and prison uh, to, to put eyes on the processes and, and, those, and those things. Uh, as, we, as we move into the additional amount of tests being in, uh, of course, I mean, any of those populations that need it, uh, we'll, we'll get in there and, and see how to deploy those tests. Uh, I, would, I would expect that the amount of tests being brought into, these, uh, into our communities uh, it, it statewide and with inside the United States it is going to be almost exponential over the over the next month or so. So we'll we'll have more capability of doing that. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from our media? I don't see any other hands raised. Um, Tyler, you said that you had something, but we could not hear you. Do you want to type your question? I want to make sure it gets answered if you need it answered. And I don't see um, any additional questions there. So if we could have our, um, all of our panelists just please turn their cameras back on. We want to thank our Lucas County Commissioners, our Toledo Mayor, our Health Commissioner, and also um, Matthew Hamlin from Quest Diagnostics, 
who has been such an integral part of uh, putting this plan into place this week so that we're able to test um, any of the 6,000 long-term care facility patients and healthcare providers this week who need that. So thanks to all of you for making that happen. We will again post the graphic that has our community testing sites, uh, websites, and phone numbers in the comments section of the Facebook page if you are looking for that information. And we want to thank you for being with us this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks very much.